This is Thursday, January 12, 2012. We are in Natick, Massachusetts, and this tape is part of the Morse Institute Library's continuing Veterans Oral History Project. My name is Maureen Sullivan. Our cameraman is Dan McDermott of Natick Pegasus. We are privileged to have with us today Agnes Paglia. Welcome, Agnes. May I ask where and when you were born? Uh, where uh, I was born in Italy. And what, what was the name of the town? The name of the town was uh, Ripe. Mm -hmm. And what part of Italy is that? Uh, it's uh, the center of uh, Italy. All right. And when were you born? I was born April 10, 1930. Your current marital, marital status? I'm a widow. You had how many children? Four. And how many grandchildren? Eleven. And what town do you currently live? I live in Needham. Okay. And tell us what Italy was like when you were growing up. Um, I was very poor. Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother couldn't take care of us mm -hmm. because uh, she was a widow too. And it was my sister and I. And uh, when I was nine years old, mm -hmm. before the war, mm -hmm broke out, we went to, she put us in an orphanage. Mm -hmm. And uh, we stayed there until 1945. And where was this orphanage? The orphanage was in uh, uh, Saludecio. The name, it's, uh, the name of the town is Saludecio. Mm -hmm. We stay uh, like uh, the province of Forli, which is a little bit above north. Mm -hmm. of my town. Now, what was the orphanage like? Uh, we were all, all girls, mm -hmm. and uh, it was very, you know, with all the nuns, mm -hmm. we couldn't go out and play outside. We just mm -hmm. to stay in the house mm -hmm. in, in the orphanage, but we went to school every day, and the school was outside of the, the convent. And what order of nuns ran the orphanage? I don't know the name the nuns. Mm -hmm. I know that they were black mm -hmm. and the, the white okay. all around. Now you said you went to school. Yes. And did were you um, kept up to date on events in Europe? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And do you, were you told of what, uh, what life outside the orphanage was like? No. No. No, we mm -hmm. stay in there. Mm -hmm. What did you learn in the orphanage? Actually, mm -hmm. uh, nothing because uh, we were there. We used to pray most of the time and uh, back and forth, really nothing. They don't have any... Uh, Mm -hmm. Work and you know, mm -hmm. I was small in any way. I was nine years old when uh -huh. I was. Okay. So, did the nuns discuss with you or with, with each other what was happening? No. No. Not with us. Mm -hmm. No. The only time that we hear that the, the, the water was going to come. It was that the nun, the German soldier, mm -hmm. told the nuns to leave the convent and take us far away. And do you remember when that was? I don't remember, but it was, I know it was cold. It must have been maybe September, October. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what year? Uh, Maybe 41. Mm. I really don't, okay. I don't remember that. Okay. So tell us a little more about uh, what was happening to you and to your sister. Um, were you taken far away? We were, at, we, the surgeon told us to leave the convent mm -hmm. because the German, I mean the English mm -hmm. people, they were coming and bomb, bomb the town. 
So we left and we went to, it was like a, a, on a farm. Mm -hmm. We walked so far away. And in the meantime that we were walking, we saw the plane mm -hmm. and uh, we saw all the, uh, something coming down from the plane, but we didn't know what it was. And the nun told us to everybody lie down. Mm -hmm. And we did. And I took my sister and I put her under me. And mm -hmm. the, the plane, they just uh, went. But we saw the bomb came down and it was my town, the town that we just left. Wow. Was the town destroyed, damaged? The town it was damaged. Uh -huh. The church that we used to go on a convent, we used to have a church. Mm -hmm. The priest died right there. Wow. But uh, somebody told us that we were already, you know, out. Mm -hmm. When we came back, they told us that the priest died. Mm -hmm. Okay. So tell us what happened then. We stay, we stay in this place, and it was a barn. Mm -hmm. We stayed there and the soldier, they were right outside the barn with the cannon. Mm -hmm. We stayed there for uh, quite a few weeks and uh, we saw the soldier, the German, with a gun and they were making so much noise that us, we were going to cry because mm -hmm. we, we were all young girls mm -hmm. over there. And uh, finally the nun said to them, please, the girls, they cry, and can you move further? They went a little further, but not much. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and that's it, that's, uh, that's the war that we saw, that they were fighting. Mm -hmm. Did the German soldier treat you all right? They, they, were, mm -hmm. they were okay. Okay. But before there, it was another soldier that came before we left mm -hmm. the uh, orphanage. It was uh, the SS mm -hmm. soldier mm -hmm. that they came. The, I was in charge to prepare the priest for the mass. Uh -huh. Everybody had a, a job to do and so yes. that day it was my job to, mm -hmm. to dress the priest. And uh, but before the priest came I hear a knocking on the door and then I open the church door and uh, it was the SS soldier with the gun. And uh, they look and I look at him, I look and I keep saying, no, no, no. But they went and look at all around if there were any, um, I don't know, people, mm -hmm. you know, inside the pupil where you go confession. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what they, uh, and they didn't see anything, so he left. Were you scared? Oh, yes. Oh. Because we knew that there was, they told us that there was the mm -hmm. worst, uh, I don't know, soldier, I guess, the, mm -hmm. the company, SS. Mm -hmm. You were mentioning German soldiers. Did you ever see any Italian soldiers? No. Mm -hmm. And aside from the plane with bombs, did you ever see any Allied soldiers? After. After. After, yes. Okay. So you're in the barn. The soldiers have moved off a little bit. Tell us what happened next. What happened next, we had a, something to eat over there. Mm -hmm. When we used to sleep, we used to sleep where they feed the, the cow. Mm -hmm. my, my sister was there because she was much younger. And I was lying down on the ground, on the floor. Mm -hmm. And before we continue, uh, can you tell us your, the name of your sister? Maria. Maria. And is Maria still with us? No. Um, sorry to hear that. Yeah. Okay, back to the barn now. Tell us what happened now. Um, now it's What uh, happened, we were there for a little while until mm -hmm. that uh, we hear somebody says, uh, the soldier that I hear, the new soldier, and we saw he was dressed all in white. And he says, the war is over. I don't know what kind of uniform. I remember it was uh -huh. dressed in white. 
the cap and, and everything. All in white. So from 39 to 45, you're basically in an orphanage. Yeah. You have been, you were evacuated at least once. Yes. So you were about nine years old when you started, and you were there until about 14? 15. 15. I came out of there 15. Okay. And what, um, what happened? But during the day, during the time mm -hmm. that we were in the barn over there, in the there, barn, mm -hmm. the soul, the German, they were really taken out because the English, they will keep coming mm -hmm. in. Uh, one German, I have to tell you this, one okay. soldier told a nun, please, I don't want to fight anymore. You have to give, give me up to the American when they come in. And the nun says, I, we can't do that. And he said, please, I have family. I don't want to die. Uh -huh. So the nun told us that it used to be the chicken coop mm -hmm. because it was a farm. And the nun says, all of us, we go in inside there because they were still, you know, fighting. And uh, we all went inside the chicken coop. And the nun, they had, a, you know, they sit on a, on a bench mm -hmm. with all the, the big dress. And we were praying. When the soldier came, uh, the German soldier came to see if at all, because I think they were missing this person. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were all in there pray. And uh, the German was in another place behind the nun uh -huh. that he didn't see her because it was like a, a door. I see. Uh -huh. And uh, so he stood there. When the American came, the nun surrender the German to the ally. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's clarify something. You remember how many girls were in your group? I think we were about 20. About 20? 20, 20 uh, yeah, 20, 21. And remember how many nuns? Oh, we were all in there. There were about five or six more because mm -hmm. uh, we all left. Uh -huh. We all left the convent, everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. So, let's, uh, did, when, uh, back to the story about the German being surrendered to the Americans, did you see this, um, this German being surrendered to the yes, Americans? Yes, yes, we saw, we uh -huh. were all, you know, we were all outside over there, uh -huh. you know, see it, yeah. And how did you react when you saw the first American soldiers? Oh, we were all excited. Mm -hmm. And how did they react to you? Well, we were, you know, that was okay, mm -hmm. yeah. And did they uh, give you anything like uh, candy? Oh, or, yes. Oh, yes. Chocolate. Uh huh. But it wasn't only the American, there were a lot of Morocco people. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. The people with the turban, what do you call them? Morocco? Uh, they had the mm -hmm. turban. We never saw a really. Uh, a black person before. Uh -huh. I never saw a black person until I saw the soldier that they came and uh, liberated us. Uh -huh. And uh, how did they behave toward you? They were very nice. They used to stay in on the field. Uh -huh. They used to cook for themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, But it wasn't uh, one soldier that uh, used to come all the time with the nuns and uh, told, you know, singing and the, I think he was in love with the nun because mm -hmm. they used to give her the candy to us and everything. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. then the nun says, no more, you don't go outside anymore. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you were seeing the soldiers, were the soldiers coming in like one or two at a time or lots of them on jeeps? Uh, no, there wasn't a jeep. They used to, uh, you know, yeah, they came out with the jeep because uh -huh. we were right on the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, we used to come back and forth, but uh, it didn't mm -hmm. didn't bother us. Actually, the lady there, she was in charge of the farm. She used to wash the clothes for the for the soldier. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this way, you know, they she was getting paid for for uh -huh. you know, yeah. And did you um, help the lady who no. ran the farm? Or? No, no, no. She was separate. Okay. We didn't have nothing to do. 
So you were basically praying. Uh, Pray, that's all we were doing, praying mm -hmm. all the time. Okay. So uh, do you remember kind of what year this was when the Americans were coming up? Was it like 1943, 1944? I think it was 1944. Okay. So let's, let's get up a little bit ahead to the end of the war. Mm -hmm. with the man in white mm -hmm. saying the war is over. What happens then? Uh, did you ever see your mother again, by the way? Who? Your mother. No, my no. mother, uh, no. I don't even know if she was alive or dead. Mm -hmm. And uh, the story that I found out that my mother was alive, mm -hmm. it's, uh, I did something bad, actually, that the nun, they never knew that. I knew that across the street, mm -hmm. it was a man that he used to come back and forth, used to travel. How, I don't know, or with the train, mm -hmm. I don't know. He uh, was going back and forth to one corner where mm -hmm. my mother, she used to live, because my mother, she was uh, uh, a maid for, a, for an American mm -hmm. uh, family. And uh, I wrote a letter. Mm -hmm. And uh, I told my sister, and my sister said to me, you can't go out, how can you deliver this letter? I say, don't tell on anybody. I'm gonna go through the window mm -hmm. of the cellar of the convent. And uh, I went over there, I knocked on the door, and I told the man, I say, would you mind deliver this letter if you find my mm -hmm. mother. And uh, he says, but uh, Ancona, it's uh, devastated with the war. Mm -hmm. I say, well, do the best you can. So when he says to me, how can I tell you because you can't come out? So I said to him, when I see you home, I'll come back again and knocking on the door, and then you can tell me for my mother is dead or alive. Uh -huh. And he had a, a letter from my mother that she was, a, she was alive. But in this letter, I wrote to her, come and pick me up. I don't want to live in anymore over here. Mm -hmm. And I told my sister, and my sister says, we, I said, don't say anything to the nun, because the nun, they weren't that good. They were really, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I, uh, I got the letter and uh, I told my sister and my mother came and picked us up. Wow. <laughs> but mm -hmm. when she came, she told us that uh, we cannot live with her because she didn't have the house. Mm -hmm. I had to live with my aunt and uh, my sister with the other hand. Mm -hmm. And I said to her, I don't care how long I can come out, that I want to learn how to do some work. I like, she was a seamstress, mm -hmm. and I want to be a seamstress too. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say in this place, they don't have anything, they don't let you go out. So that's why, and my mother came and picked us up. Mm -hmm. How did she look after all these years? I don't, you know, I remember her. She, I was nine years old when I left. Mm -hmm. She looked the same, you know. We, okay. You know, we just stay. This mm -hmm. was 1945 when okay. she came out and took us out. So tell us what happened afterward. What happened, we went home. My sister, mm -hmm. she stayed with one aunt, mm -hmm. and I stayed with the other aunt. But we had a, a room, just one room, there was my mother when she was, uh, you know, when we were together, mm -hmm. when we were young. And every night we used to cry together because my sister didn't like to stay with my aunt. Mm -hmm. I don't mind, but I said to her, what are you going to do? And she says, I'm going to be a nun. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to be a nun. I say, you want to be a nun? And we just laughed at the nun. But she says, no, I want to be a nun. So. 
what happened? She went to Rome to be mm -hmm. a nun. And she stayed two years and then she came out of there. Mm -hmm. So she came home. <laughs> okay. In the meantime, did you? In the you meantime, I stayed, but before there, mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. sister and I, we had to make some money. And my, my aunt said to me, do you want to make some money for yourself? I said, sure. What can I do? Now, this one, I was 15 years old at the time. Okay. And uh, she says, you can go. They were right after the war. She says, you know, they're looking for a peep, for the acorn. That you can go pick an acorn. Mm -hmm. And a man come and pick this acorn. They pay you money. And I say, what are they doing with their corn? And they say, they're going to grind it, and they give it to the pigs. This man had a, the pig farm. Okay. Yeah. So that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And we used to go and pick and corn, but not on, on the street. Sometimes we used to go to someone else's farm, mm -hmm. and they didn't like that. Mm -hmm. So what happened? We were over there picking the corn, the, this acorn, and you had an apron, mm -hmm. and you put all the acorn in there, and then you had a sack that you keep it outside mm -hmm. on the street that nobody sees it, and then you empty, and then you go back again, and then in the night you take it, the sack and put it in your head and go home mm -hmm. and empty it. So my sister, it happened that one guy saw us we were three of us. Mm -hmm. uh, he told us to get out of the property. And me and my sister, we didn't know anything about it, but this girl that took us, she knew everything because she did that before. Mm -hmm. So she says, don't throw the acorn down. I say, but he told us to throw the acorn. She says, no, you, if you want to give it the acorn, she was talking for us because we were very shy. Mm -hmm. She says, you can have the corn, but not the way I, I had the corn in my, so she threw all the corn down on the, mm -hmm. and says, now pick it up yourself, because we was there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just to clarify, uh, are we talking acorns, like the, little yeah, nuts? Acorns. Okay, yeah, acorns, nuts. thank you. Okay, so you're picking acorns and now, uh, tell us what happened next. My sister, <laughs> my sister, she was so afraid. She was much, she was two years younger than me. Mm -hmm. She saw the man with the, with the rifle. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he had the rifle. Okay. And he says, put it down. My sister, she got so afraid that she turned around, look at him, but she didn't see that uh, it was a tree, and she hit the tree. <laughs> so the acorn, they all fell out. <laughs> oh. And this was before she went to Rome. <laughs> oh yes, that okay. was before she went to Rome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So tell us a little more about uh, what, what was then happening with you. Then we used to you. sell the corn, yeah. the acorn. Mm -hmm. We made a pretty good money too. Mm -hmm. And then, then I started going to work as a seamstress, you know, to mm -hmm. learn how to do some work, but no pay. Right. So when did you um, come to the United States and tell us how that happened? It happened that in 1950, mm -hmm. my uncle came to Italy for a visit. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, he saw me that I was working, uh, you know, actually I was like, uh, uh, my, my aunt had uh, three boys mm -hmm. and I was the only one I was doing all the work for her and mm -hmm. uh, he didn't like uh, the way I was doing, you know, so much work and, and uh, she treats me, I guess, like, uh, uh, you know, Cinderella, put it this way. <laughs> okay. So he says, uh, I'm gonna try to do something for you, mm -hmm. to bring you in New York, in this country, in America. Okay. So the uncle was actually living in the United States yes. at the time. What part of the United States? He was living in Boston. Boston? Yeah. Okay. But this uncle had his idea. Mm -hmm. Then in 1952, the other uncle came 
that he used to live in Arlington. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, they got together because he, w he used to go back and forth all the time in mm -hmm. Italy, right after the war. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, we, you started do this one in your head. I think I'll take care of her. I'll bring her over in, mm -hmm. in the United States. And that's what happened. Okay, in the, in the meantime, you have been learning how to be a seamstress? Yes. And working as a seamstress? Yeah, but no money. No money? No money. But a, very, a good uncle? <laughs> very good uncle when, he came, when I came over here. Mm -hmm. I came in 1955, and uh, I went to work with his wife, mm -hmm. that she was a seamstress in Boston, and okay. that's the way I learned. So tell us a little bit about Boston in the 1950s and you just getting off the boat. <laughs> when I get off the boat with the Andrea Doria. Mm -hmm. The Andrea Doria? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, oh, let's sidetrack a bit. Tell us about the Andrea Doria. Uh, I came with the Andrea Doria. It was September. Mm -hmm. I left uh, Italy September 22nd. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it took me a week to come over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I, I, I was in New York, mm -hmm. I landed in New York, and uh, my aunt and my uncle, my aunt, I had a four, they all came and picked me up. And I was driving with them in a car, and then I saw from the boat, I see so many lights, and then I say, oh my goodness, what is all the lights over there? That because it was still dark, we were going mm -hmm. to get, you know, near New York. And uh, a person, I think it was the guy that I was, I don't know, a, a skipper over there, mm -hmm. said to us, that it's New York. Mm -hmm. I say, oh my goodness, look all the lights. And uh, so when we come out of there, my uncle was driving, but the first time I see it, uh, it was a lot of cars, you mm -hmm. know, big car. And then when I started driving, I see, because it was September and October, mm -hmm. all the different color of the oh, trees. The foliage, yes. The foliage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I said to my uncle, what's all this yellow and the orange? And they said to me, that's trees, the leaves. I said, really? So I, that's the that's for me it was the best. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I ever saw the, you know, the color of the trees. Mm -hmm. So you ended up settling in Boston. Yes, in Arlington. In Arlington. Yeah. And you ended up being a seamstress. I ended up the seamstress. The seamstress. I was doing at the my aunt. I had two hands working mm -hmm. on the same uh, shop, mm -hmm. and uh, one. My mother's sister, she was the simple maker. So she used to, she taught me how to do everything. Mm -hmm. I was uh, right across from her, the sewing. Yeah. And she says, you do this, do that. So I learned how to do that piece work. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, and I used to go home with the other aunt that uh, she used to work too over there with mm -hmm. me. And we stood. The, the company was The Wolf, Mr. Wolf, and, and it was in Tremont Street. Tell us a little bit about Boston in the 1950s, where, uh, when, when you first settled in. I'm sure it was different from what it is today. Uh, oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, we used to go Gilchrist. We used to go mm -hmm. Tremont Street, uh, Filene's Basement. Mm -hmm. um, what else? I, I mean, it was beautiful. Oh, mm -hmm. I used to take my. Uh, we used to drive it all over the place with my uncle. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't have any car that time. Mm -hmm. I couldn't drive, and uh, it was nice. Uh huh. So, when did you get married? I got married in 1957. And tell us a little bit about your husband. Uh, when I came in this country, I met my husband because his aunt and uncle, they were the best of friends and my aunt and uncle. Okay. And, uh, and uh, his aunt told him that uh, 
uh, my aunt was expecting a niece from Italy, mm-hmm. and uh, maybe you can go out with her. And uh, so we started, uh, mm-hmm. it was a picnic, uh-huh. and uh, he was there mm-hmm. in Fremignan. We went to the picnic, and that's, uh, you know, we started. And what was your husband's name? Donato, D-O-N-A-T-O. Okay, and did uh, did Donato, uh, was he a veteran, or? No, no, he, okay. no, no, he wasn't. And but what, he was, mm-hmm. he was a, uh, uh, what do you call it? They call him, you know, for the, for to be a, uh, to go in a service. A reservist? But they, oh, he didn't mm-hmm. pass. He oh, didn't, okay. They didn't call. So he was, he was drafted, he but he yeah, didn't. He, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I see. So uh, what did he do for a living? He was a carpenter. Okay. And where, after you married, where did you settle? We settled in Needham. In Needham. Tell us a little bit about Needham in those days. Well, I was most of a inside the house mm-hmm. because uh, my husband built the house for, for us. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're living right across the street from his aunt. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was in the house all the time, you know, because I had, I actually, I got married and uh, my husband, before we got married, he started building the house. Mm-hmm. And when the, he went for the physical to be, they call him back again. Yes. And they say, yes, you have to go in on a service. Uh-huh. And my husband said to, to this uh, person, I don't know, says, but wait a second, I just got married. The house is not finished yet. Why they ask me now? Why can I wait? They could have called me before. Mm-hmm. So the lady says, <laughs> I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> the lady says, if your wife is expecting a child, uh-huh. you can stay home. And he says, oh, okay. So <laughs> so pretty soon you so are expecting a child. Pretty soon I expected the child <laughs> and he couldn't go. So that's how it started. Well, that's one way to get out of the draft. Okay. So did any of your children go into the military? No. No? Or any of your grandchildren? No. No. Looking back on your childhood in Italy, uh, is there anything that uh, comes to mind the most from from your experiences? Yeah, mm-hmm. I say all the time, "Go bless America." Mm-hmm. The first time I even kiss the ground of my house mm-hmm. that I never had a home, mm-hmm. and when my husband gave me a house, I was the most luckiest person. Mm. And what about your sister and your mother? My sister, I tried to call my mother uh, two, three times. We did the paper, mm-hmm. but she she came and visit us, but she didn't want to live over here. Mm-hmm. And my sister, by the time she was, you know, she was married, and mm-hmm. uh, she didn't want to come. Did you ever visit Italy? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Were you freak, a frequent visitor? No, really, because mm-hmm. uh, he was the only one really working. Mm-hmm. And the, the first time that I went back, it was uh, in 1966, mm-hmm. from 55, 66. And did you see any changes? Yes. Yes. From the, the old neighborhood was Very back? Very so, yes. Okay. Yeah. Did you uh, ever read about um, the history of Italy in wartime or just try to learn more about what happened? No. When we used to go to school, mm-hmm. there was all the time, there was the Mussolini. Mm-hmm. And uh, for us, Mussolini, we used to, whatever was the history of Mussolini, we thought he was a very mm-hmm. good person. And what do, you, uh, what do you think of him now? Well. We always say is uh, we know the history because uh, uh, Africa was us, mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Libya was ours, and uh, Egypt, it was belonged to Italy, mm -hmm. and he lost everything because he went with the other mm -hmm. uh, alliance that are uh, Irun, mm -hmm. all, okay. all Italy, actually. Mm -hmm. And what did you think of Hitler at the time, or did you, were you taught about Hitler? Uh, no, we did. We didn't. No, not much. Mm -hmm. Not much. Okay. That's all we knew. That uh, you know, he should never done mm -hmm. whatever he did. Right. Yeah. Agnes, is there anything else you would like to um, say to whoever's going to be watching this in the future? Oh my goodness, I don't know. <laughs> That's all I can say. That I'm the luckiest person. Uh -huh. That. Uh, I didn't have anything over there. Mm -hmm. I was born very poor. And uh, I say, God bless America, believe me. Okay. Well, Agnes Paglia, thank you so much for coming and taking part in the Native Veterans Oral History Project. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay.